So hello people, how are you going? And today, I have a bunch of coins. Can you tell what is the similarity between them? While you're thinking about it, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Glenn. If you're coming back to another video, I'd like to say welcome and thank you very much for watching my video and uh, being a subscriber. And if you're new to my channel, uh, I would encourage you to subscribe so I can show you more about currency from around the world from different time periods to current and also I do banknotes as well because I collect both and I also buy and sell so here I have a bunch of coins and the similarity between them is they all have a hole in the middle so you might be familiar with these type of coins with holes in the middle. So these are Chinese cash coins. This one I have not attributed, so I'm not too sure what the rain period is. This is one of the earliest ones with the hole in the middle. This is a Wushu coin. Issued between 200 and uh, 600, oh, 200 BC, 600 AD. So about eight, 900 years this is issued for yeah in various uh different styles and designs but it is not the earliest coin with a hole in it you have the bang liang which is earlier and you also have um cash type coinage from the warring states period and if you look at war and states period it's quite interesting now the chinese used these holes in the middle so they could string them together so they would get I've shown this before, so this is a prevalent or prevailing theory. They just um, get a string, put it in the middle, and they type probably about a hundred coins together. And with that, they'd actually use to purchase items. Now they would also use these individually. You know, if you purchase a small item and you only need a few coins, then you don't need a whole string. But if you want to purchase a lot of things or something expensive, like, I don't know, you want to purchase implements for the home, a cooking pot, then you probably need a few thousand coins for that. Or you could use um, gold and silver, but in China, they actually never used, they actually did mint a few coins, which are dubious classification. But... Uh, for the most part, they didn't use gold and silver coins, not like the Romans and in India. So, that explains that. And, that explains why this Indo-Chinese coin has a, a hole in the middle, because it is actually taken stylistically, it's taken off the Chinese cash, which up until about 1945, Indochina still used, although they were machine struck. And they were also cast. So that explains this Indo-Chinese coin with a hole in it. So it's 1914. And it's got in Chinese, uh, yep, fun. 100, I know, one, probably 100 of a um, piaster. Because this is valued at 1 cent. But I can't really, f maybe it's one farm, one cent, and one hundredth of a cent. Maybe, I'm not too sure. So, but various other countries, they've issued it for different periods. So here we have a Greek 50 lepta. So this is from the kingdom period, it's 954, it has a hole in it. Um, we have a British West African States, 1912. And this is uh, one tenth of a penny. So that is, let me see if I can get better light. So one penny is a pretty small coin, so that's very small. We have a Romanian tin banny. So the five banny also had a hole in it. This one is dated, ooh, 1906. Um, Indonesian, 1951, five sen. We have a Thai, ten satang. This is dated, I can't actually read that, it's probably 2000 or something. Um, but the early Thai coinage was all in Thai, 
tens of ten because I can read ten. India, one piece, nineteen forty seven. So nine piece, not bad. We have a Dutch Indy East Indies, nineteen forty five. This is actually a highly minted coin. It has a uh, Joey and looks like Joey. That's just a Malayan Arabic script, and uh, it's probably Javanese. We have Papua New Guinea, so this actually still circulates. Uh, although it's a reduced size coin, this is, I believe, 33 millimeter, and the new one's 30 millimeter. And this was introduced in 1975 to replace the one Australian dollar, because they used Australian dollars back then. So that is a current one that they still use. Japanese 100 mon. I did make another video on this. Has a square hole. As you can see, most of them are round holes, and some the older ones have square ones. We have our French coins. So I showed. So 25 cents, 35, 10, and 25 cents had a hole in it. And at this time, also Belgium as well. So I've got Belgium coin here, five centimeters. So France and Belgium between. 1900s and the first second world war they actually centimeters coins 5 10 and 20 5 had holes in it ever current coins actually circulate with holes in it a japanese 5 and 50 yen so this is a 50 yen year 11 so that actually circulates and i doubt it very much they string them together to actually use it as change because um, I've never actually, well, never actually seen anyone in Japan do that. They just use modern types of uh, change carrying. They either put it in a pocket or put it in a pouch. So Nigeria, one penny. So that's a older coin with a hole. The biggest one of the 19th century, or 20th century should I say, in 1900s. This East Africa, 937 10 cent. And that was used probably up, up until the 60s. Up until they got independence. And here I have a set of three Lao coins, 1952. So these coins, where's the 10 cent? So these coins are actually used probably to differentiate these coins from uh, other type of coins. So if you've got two coins that are pretty similar, so uh, probably these coins would probably be similar to the centimeters, uh, the franc coins. To differentiate it, they um, would put a hole in it. But apart from differentiating coins, maybe they could be like a design some type of design feature that they just wanted to use to make it different something they've never used before but if um, you go to Papua New Guinea oops you have the 20 Toa and the 1 Kina which are pretty similar in size and I think about the illustration illiteracy rate is about 50% so to differentiate between these two coins they'd actually put a hole in the one kina so if someone can't read or write or even know the denominations they get these coins they go oh, I don't I know that's a 20 kina I know it's less value because it doesn't have a hole in it so that may be another way that they can actually um, differentiate and that's why um, British India actually had Different size coins, I mean different shape coins, not different size, and even up until uh, independence of India, see, they had different uh, shapes because of the high literacy rate. And those different shapes were actually easier to uh, distinguish. But now they mean that India just has round coins because the illiteracy rate's gone down and people have been educated in their coin designs. So, those are coins with a hole in it. So, the conclusion is that, well, there's different reasons why people put holes in the coins, or countries did. 
Um, some of it was used in trade, some of it was a design feature, some of it was to differentiate between denominations. So, anyway, that's uh, my conclusion to my talk. I like to have uh, feedback and, and to get to know what you think these holes were put in coins for. Anyway, please subscribe if you haven't. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Have an awesome coin collecting time, people. Hooroo!